So, hello everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, very good morning to all of you and thanks for joining this session. So, we are here to present a session on how to manage known state in OpenStack deployment. Uh, in this session, we will see uh, the, the uh, different components of uh, a known state, we will see the definition of known state and we will see how uh, we can bring an inconsistent site from an uh, inconsistent state to a consistent state and we will see uh, the different uh, uh, phases in achieving the, this uh, consistency in the network. So, before doing that, uh, uh, let me introduce myself and my team member here. Uh, my name is Vinod Yadav and I am working as a cloud deployment engineer for Ericsson under cloud platform. I have with me Shashank Gupta who is also working as a cloud deployment engineer for Ericsson under cloud platform. So, why we have chosen this topic? Uh, we have chosen this topic because as a cloud deployment engineer, uh, we have worked on um, different infrastructures as a deployment and as a support engineer. And we have seen the environments where we have, for example, 10 to 20 different sites deployed. And uh, most of these uh, sites have a different level of hardware, a uh, different level of software, a different configuration of settings, uh, different kernel bias version, and other security level configurations. So, this kind of environments are uh, inconsistent environment and they have many challenges like frequent application crash, um, they have free frequent system outages that can um, significantly impact the tenants. Uh, it can impact the overall stability, uh, functionality and uh, profitability of the business. So, uh, we have also seen the environments where uh, we have for example, 10 to 20 different sites deployed and uh, all these sites are on the same level of hardware, software and other configuration uh, uh, settings. So, these are the consistent uh, deployments and they have many advantages over the inconsistent deployments like they are more stable and because of the stability uh, the tenants have a positive uh, uh, impact and, uh, and that adds up to the overall profitability of the business. So, basically in this uh, session we will try to go through the challenges uh, which we face in an inconsistent deployment and the way forward to bring this uh, inconsistent uh, deployment uh, from inconsistent state to the consistent state. So, what we hope to cover today in this session is first we will go through the definition of known state um, and then after that we will go through the different components of known state. We will see uh, the, the different components like hardware, uh, software, uh, configuration uh, files settings, uh, we see the kernel BIOS versions and um, other uh, security level configuration. And then after that, we will go through the benefits of the uh, known state. And then important part to cover today in this uh, session will be how to achieve known state, where we will go through the different phases uh, in achieving the known state. And then we will conclude our presentation uh, um, uh, followed by a question answer session. So, what is known state? So, known state is basically knowing the stable state of the deployed system. Now, uh, the deployed system consists of uh, many open stack and non open stack nodes. And these nodes consist of many components like hardware, they have softwares uh, deployed, they have uh, configuration files, and they have uh, kernel BIOS version, they have firmwares and other security level configuration. So, known state is basically creating a baseline uh, for a stable infrastructure and um, deploying this uh, infrastructure, in, uh, de de deploying this baseline into the infrastructure, uh, making uh, sure that the baseline is implemented uh, into, the, into the different sites in the uh, infrastructure. So, creating a baseline is a important aspect in um, uh, achieving known state. So, baseline can be created by uh, taking a snapshot uh, from the deployed site. Uh, by, sm by snapshot, I mean uh, gathering the data from the deployed side and then doing an analysis uh, on the on the captured data and then based on the analysis fil finalizing the um, baseline um, for the deployment. So, uh, known state basically aims in maintaining uh, consistency in the network. A high degree of consistency means that for example, if we have uh, 200 compute nodes for example, deployed in a site. So, a high consistency uh, means that all this uh, deployed compute should be on the same uh, hardware levels, they should have the same software de uh, deployed, uh, they have the same configuration uh, file settings and other uh, configuration uh, should be same across all these uh, deployed sites. 
So a high uh, consistency in the in the network avoids mismatch of the features across uh, the, uh, the infrastructure, and it's easy to maintain security compliances as per industry standards. Now, uh, with the with a high degree of consistency, we have a high stability in the in the network that reduces the overall lifecycle management cost of the uh, deployed system. Now here we will uh, see some difference between the consistent versus inconsistent deployment. So uh, in this uh, slide, if you, you can see, we have two infrastructure, infra one and infra two. So uh, let's see infra one. Um, in infra one, we have, uh, for example, 200 uh, computes deployed. In infra two also, we have uh, 200 computes de deployed. But if you see closely on infra one, uh, most of the computes are on a different level. For example, let's see. Compute 1, uh, it's on version X. Compute 2 is on version X. But compute 3 is on version Y. And the last uh, compute is on version Z. So uh, most of the computes are, are at a different level. And, and, and this is an inconsistent deployment. So basically, this inconsistency in the network um, may be you know, caused because of a different reason. Um, for example, uh, let's see if a particular compute uh, there is a there is a there is an issue observed in a particular compute, and then the fix is implemented only in that particular compute. So um, the fix is impl implemented in a particular compute. So that compute uh, will be at a different version, and the rest of other computes deployed will be at a different version. So that uh, can cause the inconsistency. Um, there may be scenarios where, uh, as a part of continuous integration and continuous deployment, new racks are added to an existing uh, deployment. Uh, for example, uh, if a new rack is added and that have, for example, 40 or 50 computes node, compute nodes, and it may be possible that uh, the important updates uh, may be missed in the newly added uh, computes. So. Uh, in that case, uh, it, it can also uh, cause uh, inconsistency in the in the uh, network, and uh, this kind of uh, deployments are unstable and uh, they are more uh, security vulnerable. On the other hand, if you see infra two, uh, we have the same number of computes deployed, um, but if you see closely, um, compute one is on version X, compute uh, two is on version X. And, and the last compute uh, is also on version X. So all these computes are on the same version. And this is a perfect example of a consistent deployment. So this uh, type of deployments are, are more stable. Um, they are more secure. And it puts you in control of your infrastructure. So in the few couple of uh, slides, we will see how we can create a baseline. Um, from an infrastructure and how our environment looks uh, with a, a known state uh, deployed. So I have taken a, a reference uh, uh, infra here. So let's uh, see. Let's uh, let's uh, for example, uh, if uh, did, uh, this infra consists of uh, uh, Horizon, uh, Keystone, Compute. Um, they have controller, uh, database, and fault manager. Um, so in the production uh, environment, um, we may have uh, different other kinds of node deployed. So just an example I have taken here for infra uh, structure. So for creating a baseline, we first have to take the uh, snapshot of this infrastructure. By snapshot, I mean we have to capture the data from this uh, infrastructure. Uh, now this uh, capturing the data can be done through a different way. For example, we can use different configuration management tools, like uh, we can use Ansible. Uh, we can uh, use Puppet to uh, capture the data. Or, you, or we can use uh, the uh, data uh, collection tool like Foreman uh, to collect the data. And once the data is collected, uh, we have to analyze the data. Um, this analysis involves uh, basically um, recommendation from architects. It involves design and testing recommendation. And also, it involves uh, uh, referring to any release nodes, relevant release nodes uh, for the infrastructure. And, uh, and based on the analysis, we finalize uh, the baseline. And uh, once the baseline is finalized, it is deployed um, into, uh, into the network. So we'll, we'll see uh, this in detail in the, in the coming uh, section, where we'll see different phases in achieving a known state. So here you can see uh, we have six different sites. Um, and 
Uh, this all uh, uh, sides are pointing to a stable known state infrastructure. So that means all these sides uh, have same, um, they are on the same level and they are uh, pointing to a, a stable known state infrastructure. So uh, we have uh, created this stable known, infra uh, stable, uh, stable known state infrastructure uh, from the baseline. So that means all the six uh, sites are pointing to this stable known state. That means we have, all, we have these sites on the same level and uh, this is a, a perfect example uh, for a stable uh, environment and uh, an example for a consistency in the network. Uh, with this kind of uh, deployments, it's uh, uh, it's easy to troubleshoot um, any 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 problem in the, in the network. It's very easy to locate uh, the the issues in the network, and it's uh, very easy to troubleshoot, and it has a, a higher end user satisfaction. So uh, let's move to the next section. Uh, which is known state components where we'll be seeing the different components like hardware, software, kernel, BIOS, and other security level configuration. So I invite my colleague to go through this uh, section. Thank you, Vinod. Uh, good morning, everyone. So the first question arises, what are components and why do we need to know the components? So components are nothing but it's a part of whole environment. And we need to know the components so that we are clear and specify the requirements. Once we identify the right components, we can uh, uh, identify the changes required, structure the delivery, identify the risk, and uh, plan for the mitigation action, make right decision on the right time, and identify the overall cost for deploying this known state. So let's go through each and every component one by one. So the first component which we included is reference architecture. With the reference architecture, we refer to standard nomenclature of the servers so that we can identify why these servers were created and what is the purpose behind of these, for these servers. So in future, if there are any issues with respect to reference architecture, a troubleshooter can uh, identify the servers by looking at its name. And he can save a lot of time in looking these information outside on the documents and can easily troubleshoot the issues. With reference architecture, we also aim to clean up the artifacts. These artifacts might be created during the pre-deployment phase or the deployment phase or during the testing or during the troubleshooting phase. By cleaning up these artifacts, we can fully utilize our cloud environment and hence it can improve the performance of our system. The next component which we included is BIOS. BIOS of OpenStack nodes. An inconsistent version of BIOS can leverage two numerous threats to our, to our uh, environment. So it is important that all the BIOS in all the, all the nodes should be at the consistent version so that these risks can be mitigated easily. The third component is kernel. Kernel of OpenStack nodes. Uh, inconsistent kernel version can also impact and can also risk our environment. And it also impacts availability of new features in our environment. Since OpenStack is uh, used globally by system admins. So it is important that the kernel version should be consistent across multiple nodes, across multiple sites. The fourth component which we included is software. Software of OpenStack nodes. It may be Nova, Neutron, Cinder, Glance, any core packages. This is the base of our environment. So it is important that this should be also included in known stat, a known state project. Uh, this software contains bug fixes, which is identified by the global uh, system admins globally. They also include uh, new features. So it is important that these soft software must be updated on all the nodes across multiple sites. The fifth component is configuration. Configuration of OpenStack nodes parameter. It may be related to Nova, Nova.conf, Neutron, Neutron.conf, Heat, Cinder, Keystone, everything. This is a very important component for achieving known state. During our analysis, we found that system admins or support teams update the parameter of some files where they have tenant issues. But it is important for known state that these parameters must be updated in all the nodes so that other servers or other VMs do not face similar issues. The last component which we included in known state is security. Stay away from the danger. It is not only a necessity, but it's a requirement. So why not a cloud infrastructure? Whether it is a compute node, controller, or even a fuel node, these must be updated regularly with the latest security packages as per the company compliances. 
So summarizing known state, what we address with the components here, we address standard nomenclature, we clean up the artifacts which were created during the deployment phase or during the testing, we address the configuration dependencies, we fix the file system space, maybe it's a var log or root space, we update the kernel version, we update the BIOS version, we remove the inconsistency of package across all nodes, and at the end, we secure our node by node hardening. So let's look what benefits does known state gives to our environment. It gives us a stable environment, by, uh, and hence making it a profitable growth and improve our ability to uh, mitigate the volatility in demand. It also reduces the issues in our environment and thus reducing a lot of time which is involved in troubleshooting, and thus it saves a lot of cost. After achieving no state, it also gives us a better software quality with better speed and better efficiency along with all the quality attributes. No state also gives us a global scaling and a superior performance using automation via standard and centralized process. Moving next, we'll see how we can achieve known state by uh, keeping important factors in our mind. I'll hand over the slides to Vinod, and he will continue in brief details about those. Thank you, Shashank. So, so how to achieve known state? So um, known state can be broadly uh, achieved uh, in, uh, we have uh, three phases uh, in achieving the known state. The first phase is the pre-analysis phase and then uh, planning and deployment phase, and the last phase is post-analysis and audit. So let's uh, go through the first phase, which is the pre-analysis phase. So in the pre-analysis phase, we identify a stable uh, infrastructure for creating a baseline uh, for the, uh, for the uh, deployment. So once the uh, stable infrastructure is identified, um, we capture the data from the infrastructure now, we can capture the, the data through configuration management tools like Ansible, Puppet, or we can use the other data collection tools like Foreman. So once we collect the data, we do an analysis, and based on the analysis, we finalize the baseline. Now, now if you see here uh, in the diagram, we have a baseline ready, uh, and it's created, and it's ready to deploy into an inconsistent site X. So, uh, now, this inconsistent site X, uh, we in the pre-analysis phase, we have to take the, the data from this inconsistent site as well, and we have to do analysis. And uh, once we collect the data, we do the analysis, and then we compare the data from the inconsistent site uh, from the baseline, and we have the mismatch uh, uh, data between the baseline and the data from the inconsistent site. Now, our aim is to implement this mismatch uh, data into an inconsistent site X. So, so to summarize, in the pre-analysis phase, we create a baseline and we have the mismatch of the data uh, ready to deploy into the inconsistent site. Now, we then move to the, uh, the next phase, which is planning and deployment. So, in the planning and deployment phase, uh, we basically do the uh, development and deployment. So, in this phase, automation uh, of the baseline is done for the deployment. Now, which automation tool to select? Uh, it depends upon the organization uh, needs and requirements. Uh, they, they can use any automation uh, tool based on uh, their requirement. So once the, uh, the development is done, then the, it's very important to capture the, uh, the uh, deployment procedure into a, into a procedure document. So during the uh, development and documentation, it is very important to consider any customization which is already there in the network. Uh, and we have to make sure this customization is captured into, uh, into the procedure document and it should be addressed into the, in the, into the development phase as well. So once the uh, development is done and once the documentation is completed, we, we uh, go to the deployment phase where we deploy the uh, the baseline into the inconsistent site. And then once the, inc uh, once the ba baseline is deployed, we do a complete system validation. Uh, we have to make sure all our services, uh, all the configuration files, and all the uh, customization are preserved, and our services are all up and running. And then, um, so, uh, so to summarize, in the planning and uh, deployment phase, we have uh, done the uh, we have done the uh, development and uh, deployment, and we have uh, executed the system validation test. Um, and then, uh, finally, we enter into the third phase, which is post analysis and audit. 
So in this phase, we again uh, capture the data from the uh, deployed site. And then uh, once the data is captured, we do an analysis. And then we uh, make sure that the captured data matches with that of baseline. So in that way, we have moved the inconsistent site uh, from, from an inconsistent state to a consistent state. So we'll see uh, in detail uh, all these three phases in uh, uh, next uh, coming slides. So let's go to the first phase, which is the uh, baseline creation. So uh, in this uh, step, it's a basically two-step process. So uh, first process is the fact collection, where we collect the data from the deployed site. Now the data may consist of uh, any standard data which is there or any customized data uh, which is present in the deployed site. So we have to consider uh, both these data and we have to collect uh, uh, this, this data. And once uh, we collect the data, we have to do an analysis on the collected data. So the analysis uh, involves uh, architect recommendation. Um, it involves uh, design and uh, testing recommendation. And uh, we also refer to any relevant release notes um, from the deployed side. And based on that, we, um, we finalize our uh, baseline. So, so this uh, slide basically mentioned what I just talked. So uh, for creating a baseline, uh, it is uh, required to identify the stable configuration as per most appropriate end user requirement. And it involves the collection of configuration settings present in all nodes. It involves collection of the standard data as well as uh, any customization uh, in the network. And it involves uh, recommendation from architects. It involves design recommendation, testing recommendation. And also, it involves referring to the release nodes. With that, uh, let's move to the second phase, which is uh, planning and deployment. And I invite Shashank to go through it. So now we have uh, identi done the pre-analysis and identified the baseline. The next step is to deploy those changes, deploy the node state delta. Since our environment is huge, we have hundreds of compute nodes and multiple sites. So we have to do rollouts in that manner that it should be very speedy, but keeping in mind that it, we should deliver a quality service with full efficiency. So by automating solution, we cover all these three factors, which is speed, quality, and efficiency. As automation helps us limiting the response time between task and activity, it also speed up the delivery by making task and activity consuming less times with lesser efforts. By automation, also it enables us to uh, easy access to our dashboard with real-time data and for fast governance and decision making. Automation directly supports the delivery with high quality services with higher precision and accuracy rate. With automation, we can limit our amount of rework as compared to the manual deployments. Uh, automation also ad can adapt to new features easily. And thus, we can shift our focus to value-driven activities. Thus, automation is key to accelerate the process execution. So let's see what value does automation gives to known state. It can marginally reduce the cost by saving a lot of time in deployments. Plus, it gives a better software quality with high precision and accuracy. We can easily speed up the delivery in multiple sites using automation. And thus, it empowers us to uh, utilize our full capabilities. So it gives a good margin, a rapid growth, and market protection. But to uh, achieve this known state, we have to choose the right path. That is correct configuration management tools. Here, we are specifying some industry standard configuration management tools. The first one is Puppet. It's an open source tool. It's a very reliable and scalable tool. Another tool which we can use for automation are Ansible playbooks. These are quite famous in OpenStack industry. It is also very scalable, easy to operate, grow, and upgrade. With Ansible, it also empowers us to control the deployments in a specific manner. Apart from doing the deployments, doing the changes, we need some other tools that, for data collection so that we can do a pre-analysis and the post-analysis. We can use tools like Foreman, easily create Ruby facts, install customized plugins, and this gives us a real-time data. And we can compare the data uh, for multiple sites at the same time. 
Apart from this, we need some tools to validate our environment. We can use any industry standard tools like Tempest or anything of your choice. So once we identify our tools, the next step is to deliver the known state delta for various components, whether it is a reference architecture, BIOS and kernel, security, uh, software packages, or customized configuration. At this stage, we, uh, we address the discrepancies in software in all the sites and update the packages. We also update kernel and BIOS version, fix the server nomenclature with the standard specifications, clean up the artifacts, update the configuration, and making sure that our customization still persists. Once we did all these de deployment, the next step is to validate our changes, whether our changes are not breaking the system or it's not introducing any new issues. Once the validation is complete, we move to the final audit. So let's see what phases are there in final audit. In final audit, uh, we can use any configuration management tool like Foreman, because running the audit in manual way will take a lot of time and can have errors. With Foreman, we can easily create Ruby facts for various things, whether it is a packages, whether it is for security, whether it is for kernels. We check whether the deployed system and uh, pre with pre-analysis state and see whether the consistency has been achieved or not. We validate all the customization are in place, all the configurations are updated properly, and the system is secure. So once we done the final loss analysis and we achieve the known state, now uh, I want to conclude with some recommendations. How can we always be on the known state? So the first recommendation is that we should have a baseline. A golden standard configuration should be set and it should be well documented for future reuse. So whenever a new site in future is rebuilt, uh, is built, or any rack is expanded, or any site is rebuilt, these standards, these documents should be always referred. And it should be updated regularly when there are changes as per the requirement. The second recommendation which we make is that there should be a proper life cycle management of system updates, whether it is a small update or a large deployment or a security package update or a software update. It should be done with the proper life cycle management process. The rollout should be done in all the nodes. The third recommendation we make is that rollout should be automated using the configuration management tools. It may be of your choice, but it helps achieving the known state properly. The next recommendation which we make is that the deployment should be in a controlled manner. We should identify whether this uh, update is required in our system and it, gives, it adds a value to us, then only we should plan for its delivery in proper manner and in all nodes across all multiple sites. The last recommendation is that we should properly optimize our admin resources so that we can save our time and cost. With this, we conclude our session, and we are open for question and answer sessions. OK, uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. If you have any questions later on as well, uh, you can uh, reach, out reach us, us at the email ID here. So thanks again. Thanks for joining this session today. Thank you. Thank you.